there's a signage that says no PDA. Chinatown in those days, that was a favorite spot for tourists and the Sarong Party girls. Go PGs. to this Caucasian man, sit on their lap or have the man grope them or kiss in public. Also the children, the elderly, they were very offended, children were closed their eyes. So they put a the signage there. We are now in front of this building. If you want to feel something, this is a very good spot. Understanding spiritual dynamics. And it's just very stale in Pakistan. Good evening everyone, I'm Eugene Tay from Supernatural Confessions and welcome to a brand new season of Haunting History where we explore the darkest side of Singapore's past. This season, we are going to touch on how the scars of our history have affected our present. And here in the studio with me is my special guest. Hi everyone, my name is Kyle. I am a filmmaker and podcaster. I'm the co-founder of this uh, horror channel called Hantu. So we produce mainly horror podcasts. So you may know me from Ghost Maps, Dead Air, and most recently, Tales from Incredible Tales. Mm. Uh, I was raised a Buddhist, mm. but then, you know, when you study the arts and then you start being more free, it's like, ah, it's a bit limiting. I need more. Mm. Then I went full 80s during my urban exploration days. Ooh. Then I kind of haunt things. Then after that, I downgrade back to it agnostic then i've been there since because wow. a lot of the times some of the stories that we get are quite out there la. Mm. like that it's, it's very hard to believe mm. but at the same time i would i would say the spirits bring us back to reality mm. yeah with like things that you can explain mm. yeah. now you say you've done urban exploration yeah right? and have you been to any location in singapore that made you think twice or see a place from a different perspective after your investigation i think one of the more interesting ones that i went to was Tangling brunei hostel Mm. That one, whoa, that was really dark. I've been there three times at three different stages of my, I would say, like urban exploration career. One mm. where I was like super young and stupid. I was like super disrespectful. I would go into places like just, oh, I am afraid of no ghosts. No such thing as ghosts. You want, you come and hunt me. I, I'm not scared. <laughs> yeah. Today, we're going to bring you to a different place. Mm. Not mm. so much abandoned. Okay. In fact, it's a place where a lot of tourists go to and if you go there today, you will not even have any Hantu vibe at all. In fact, I'm going to bring you to Chinatown. Ooh. Uh -huh. Not bad, not bad. In this episode, we are going to uncover what was once a notorious area rife with secret societies, illegal activities and violent clashes. Chinatown. Does the first thought come to your head is haunted or not haunted? Haunted, definitely. When I think about Chinatown today, I, I only think of food. But there's more to Chinatown than all of this food and temples and old memories. Come, let me take you to Pagoda Street and we'll talk more about the past in Chinatown. And I've got a special guest later on that you might want to meet as well. He grew up in Chinatown area. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, so let's find out for him as well. Job. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. So now we are standing in Chinatown. Ooh. Looking at the bright lights, the tourists walking up and down, you cannot tell that once upon a time, this was one of the most notorious places for secret societies, illegal activities, and gang clashes. I've got Mark here today with us to give us some insights about Chinatown that will not be found, say, on the internet, on history books, because you live through history. So can you give us an idea of how Chinatown was like? back in your, your time. The both sides of the roads are all the hawkers and vendors. Mm. There is no law and order. That means you come first, you grab the place. Mm. But the secret society people, they will muscle in. So there's a lot of fights, argument, unhappiness around. History books have taught us that when the British came here, they sort of carved out different parts of Singapore for the different races. And Chinatown was where all the immigrants for the Chinese Kim. We must not forget there were different dialect groups yeah. as well. And what would you do when you have five or ten different friends all to yourself? Start something. Start uh. something, right? <laughs> you gotta start something, something. And that's where the triad started. Yeah. Mainly as a good cause to keep themselves safe. What I know, the heart of chi Chinatown mm. is actually a Cantonese. And the Hokkien's will be at the fringe of Chinatown oh. around Havelock Road, People's Park. Teochews will move up further up at the banks of Clark Key. Mm. 
Who who drew that? Who yeah. drew that? Uh, Jackson Plan, right? Yes, um, the Jackson Plan. It's, it's known as the Raffles uh, Town Planning. Oh. So you said Cantonese is the main one here. Yes. Would I be wow. right to say that the Gi Hin Secret Society, which is the first Singapore Secret Society, was made up mostly of Cantonese? Yes. If, if it's this enclave here, mm. even you're not a Cantonese, you must speak Cantonese because you, you will be the oddball out. So when I went to research on the whole opium problem and I found out when you trace the money, yeah. it's actually brought in by the Angmo, the Caucasians. The British. Mm. Actually controlled by the Jews. Yes. And sent to this part of Chinatown because they know it's going to be addictive and that's where the money is. But back then, the idea of opium was not for being abused. Yes. Because the coolies, those people working here and carrying those sacks and backbreaking uh, laborers, they have no form of medication, no no balm, which is very costly. Yeah. Opium was what they go for to numb the pain. Kuli, especially the older ones, they mm. come home with a lot of injury and pain after yeah. a hard day's work. These pushers will tell him, you got no drugs. The, the government don't take care of you. Yeah. Take this opium. Mm. Uh, this is a medicine. Yeah. So they'll take bit by bit. After, after a few months, they get addicted. That's it, that's it. Then the price will jack up. Yeah. Sounds like the modern world though. Yeah. Yes, and the coolies don't take the pure first class opium. Yeah. They are actually in Hokkien we say the, the Apian Sai. Means oh. in English it's called dredge, D-R-E-G-S. Okay? They are actually taking the waste and they, they can't have it because opium yeah. is expensive. You hey, can tell me who is this? Uh? This, if I'm not wrong, is an example of what a Samsui woman is. Mm. Some few women are those women who are working very hard, but not in the brothel, they work hard at the construction sites. And the reason why they wear a red headgear is a very interesting story to it. Mm. Because as you're walking through the construction site, carrying things, mm. you don't want people from above to throw bricks down and hit you if they didn't see you. <laughs> so that's what... Red means danger. Red don't don't, don't, don't crack, crack no, my head. But there's no proper protection, like. it's just a cloth. No, no, right? it's, yeah, it's yeah. just a, a like warning, cloth. warning. Uh, headdress, that's right. Headdress. Yes, right. Now, uh, I'm, I'm asking on behalf of Kyle, mm. can you show us the brothel here? The brothels are actually, uh, from my experience, Smith Street, Temple Street, Kyongset Street. Mm. Okay, so I got two experts here telling me about the brothel trade here. I'm going to have you guys bring me to this spot <laughs> for research purposes. Sure. Shall we go? Yeah, let's go. So, yeah. This way. This is Pagoda Street. Mm -hmm. Right, that main thoroughfare from the MRT station all the way down to Simariaman Temple. Mm. Well, it's bright, but it's not as crowded as where we came from. Be quiet, eh? right? <laughs> But I know that this is the place where, back in the 1800s, was filled with coolies, especially this lane. Coolies, uh, like I say, they, they come to Singapore actually seeking a, a fortune. Mm. But most of them, when they come, life was the other way around. Mm. They, they are broke, they have to work and they are like slaves. Mm. Last time they got no handphone, no no TV, no en entertainment. Okay. So they will just hang around here, uh, indulge in gambling, vices and opium. Just so I get a bit of idea, how, how was opium then like inside? There, there's one famous uh, Opera house. It used to be an open den mm. uh, at the fourth story. Surprising, in the early 60s, people still, the older folks, especially those in the 1890s, they still consume opium. Mm. So mm. basically, it's a one wo wooden board across a room, yeah. and uh, they uh, they will just lie on the wo wooden board, okay. and then they will just uh, use the, the the pipes and smoke the. That was opium. illegal already, right? Yes, it's supposed to be illegal. Oh. Mark, my yep. friend Kyle is very disappointed. Oi. He walked past Trinkanu Lane hoping to see what you promised us, Shh. but there's nothing. Can I say, can I say? It was things of the past. Mm. Mm. Now it's, it's, it's a different ball game. Now it's uh, Italy's. Durian. Uh, Michelin. Mm. You talk mm. about this. No more those visors. I see. How was it like? Would the ladies be by the side road? Like, I'm trying to imagine how it would look like back then. Not every shop house is a sex worker shop. Okay. okay? Basically, they'll hang around roughly about 
7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, these shop houses, they have a very steep staircases. Okay. So they'll hang on the level one, the main entrance of the staircase. Some are very well dressed, like they have this cheong sam mm -hmm. with the, the slit to show their uh, sexy ties. Mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. ah. So mm -hmm. this street host, uh, very unique memory. They promote herbal tonic with exhaustic endangered animals. Is oh. it a specific part? Yes, but the way oh. they, they <laughs> you drink and then you go upstairs. Uh -huh. Monkeys, they just open up the skull and the client will just take a spoon and scoop scoop the brain and eat. Uh. Cobras is about four feet long. They will hook it onto a hook and they will pull it down oh. and then after that they, they will use a, a very sharp knife and encircle the, the, the part of the neck they will peel up the whole skin oh my god okay and what they actually want is the glow bladder mm -hmm. they will put this organ into brandy a very small cup of brandy then hmm. they will drink yeah. That is to improve the, the, the performance. Uh, performance. The performance. 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 Uh. So I need to ask you, right? Like, so there's so many darkness, so many vices, and so many death, right? So here confirm quite keras. <laughs> ah. Yeah. So I let me share with you guys uh. Uh, the next place where it's got ghost stories one. Oh. Yeah, I heard the ghost stories. Wow. Yeah, say go in. Let's go. Okay, let's yeah. go. You got me at ghost stories. Okay, guys, uh mm. on your right, you see this lane? Mm. It used to be called Sago Lane. Mm. They sell uh, desserts here? Yes. It's actually known in Cantonese Seyang Kai. Seyang Kai. Alright, means Dead People Street. This street, there are a couple of shop houses that catered for people that is going to pass away. You can consider this as old hospice. Nowadays, uh, we, we don't have all this. This is things of the past. Mm. These peoples are mostly the poorer class people. Mm. Uh, a terminal ill, very sick. They are left here on canvas beds mm. and then let them to rot and die. Mm. And in front of the canvas bed, normally they will put two candles. Speaking of like the streets and the lane, right? Then uh, right in front of us is like the Buddha Tooth Temple. So I have a conspiracy theory, oh, okay. <laughs> which is to Good. say that, you know, like as Singaporeans, we tend to build temples on places that have a dark history mm. yes. or mm. a bit eerie, la, right? Yes. I know you enjoy this. Uh -huh. So uh, in one of my podcasts, right, we actually have a story that is set in Sego Lane. But the story was set in the 1970s. So my friend's mother worked in that KTV uh, as a waitress. La. So they will work uh, until very late. She remember working uh, one night during the seven months. Hungry ghost man, until 3 a.m. Most of the customers have left already by then. Then it's no KTV is a lot of booth one, ma. Yes. Mm. Then uh, she saw a group of customers, two female, two males, walked into the last room. She was like, okay, we're close. I need to go and tell them. Then as she approached them, right, the cashier stopped. The cashier stopped her. Uh -huh. And then she's like, don't no. Yeah, those are not human. Didn't capture anyone on the CCTV. And also that she recalled that they were wearing uh, red and green. Uh, so in Mandarin, right, in Chinese uh, mm. culture, Hong Nan Li Nu Lu means to say that that's the colour of the clothes that the deceased will be burned for. And usually it's for the oh. like Chinese, you know, the dolls that yeah, you the burn. Yeah, the paper dolls, yeah, right? So that, paper yeah, dolls. Yeah, that's right. the theory that uh, those are the paper dolls that are visiting that KTV. Mm. Yeah, it's just across the road. See the wind yeah. blowing on us really. Like, so. mm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thank you, Mark. Yeah. Love having you on the show. Yes. I'll catch up with you again. Yeah. Right, Kyle? Studio time? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it's been a night, man. It's been a wonderful night. Fun, In fact, fun. I learned so much more about channels now today as well. Yeah. Me too. What do you learn about it? I think there's like a lot of layered of history. That's yeah. why that is so dark in that sense. Mm. That's like the the some sweet women, there's like the coolies, the opium, mm. and then like the gangs. Mm. Yeah. We, we went through the triad area, mm. the opium dens, yeah. and the brothels. Yeah. Do you think, from your understanding of the supernatural law, mm. do any of these places bring that sort of negative energy to it? Definitely the opium houses. Because mm. uh, I think the, the special guest did mention that people died in there. Mm. And I'm pretty sure like 
and th- these were not like high end opium houses. These were like for the coolies, right? Mm. So they probably really dispose of the body, really like just haphazardly. Yeah. So I think there was a lot of restless spirits there, mm. and I don't know why. It it just felt really creepy when you look from the outside, and I don't think it's like fully rented out. Mm. So there there probably is some like empty spaces there mm. that's creepy. For some reason, when Mark said what he did about Sago Lane, mm. I felt the air shifted. Or is it just me? The wind blew. Uh. <laughs> the wind blew. No, there was like just at that moment there was like this gush of yeah, wind. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm wondering if that's pure signs or you bring out the EMF. Uh. <laughs> you bring out the EMF. Need to ask, are you here with us? But what do you think about mm. about Mark, right? You know, Mark being the guy that lived around the area and telling us stuff that we cannot mm. find in history books. Mm. Anything that you learned from him today? I think that's the beauty about you know us sharing stories. History can be written in a way whereby sometimes it doesn't cover certain areas, especially yeah. the dark history. Yeah. Which I feel that it's very valuable to have guests like Mark on the show mm. to talk about history that we may not know. And he is a lived-in experience. Mm. He's seen it. He's lived it. So I thought that was quite quite nice of him to share as well. How has anything about tonight changed your view of Chinatown? Actually, I, I went in with like a mind that. It's ra- relatively sad that oh, Chinatown is quite haunted. Mm. But I didn't know that it's so layered, you see. Mm. I didn't know that, you know, um, there was so much suffering in there. Yeah. Cause to me it's just oh another historical place now. Like where, you know, all the Chinese community gathered. But then when he explained like the history, then it's like, okay, it makes sense that it's so haunted as per yeah. se, right? History and you know, supernatural stories, they kinda cross very well because when people stop talking about it, it stops to exist. Yeah. So it's like, there's this quote where you say like, you die the last time when people stop talking about you after you've passed. So it's the same thing with history. We should keep talking about it. Um, not obsess over it, but we should keep talking about it so that it lives on, you know, spiritually. Looking into our past allows us to better understand where our ancestors come from and the troubles they once faced and the struggles they endured. In a time where we focus on our present and our future, may we never forget to remember our past as well. And for Haunting History, my name is Eugene Tay. See you next time. The lot there, bro. Cockroach! Uh, I save you, I save you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's out already, it's out already. Okay. He, he know that I like to kill cockroach. Huh? Thank you so much for watching Haunting History with us. And we know you enjoyed today's episode. So please, like, share, comment and subscribe. If not, the hantu will get you. That's right. Send it away, okay?